So today we're going to take the oldest and most popular commercial kombucha brand in the USA. Of course, that means we're not going to do a typical review of GT's kombucha, where we simply look at how their drinks taste or what flavors are available. Instead, we're going to analyze all aspects of GT's and question everything, from how long they ferment their kombucha to exactly which probiotic species are in their drinks. And since our research team spent months analyzing the leading kombucha brands for you, we'll even look at how GT's products compare to other popular kombuchas. Finally, you'll be able to work out which is best for you. Let's go. So before we get into it, I just want to say, like all our product reviews, we receive zero compensation or incentive from the company we are reviewing, which means we are completely unbiased. And as you'll see in this review, we don't hold anything back when analyzing companies in the digestive health space. And that's because our mission is to help you discover what truly works and what doesn't work for good gut health. So with that out of the way, let's get into our findings. Although we'll dive into the nitty gritty of GT's specific products in a minute, I think the first thing you'll find interesting is who is behind the company, because this can usually tell us a lot about the potential quality of their products. So GT's was founded by George Thomas Dave, or GT Dave, as he's most commonly known. This was back in 1995. There's a bit to unpack here, and I think you'll quickly see why so many people like GT's kombucha. So for starters, 1995, we're talking about a time when commercial kombucha simply did not exist in the USA, meaning Dave literally single-handedly built the kombucha market. And to further put this time in context, GT's main competitors only got started in the last decade or so, with Hum in 2008, Kavita in 2009, and Healthy in 2012 just to name a few. Now, the other fascinating detail that got our attention here is that Dave remains the sole owner. And in a world where most of the top selling kombucha brands are part or wholly owned by the big beverage players or private equity funds, the fact that GT's remains 100% family owned and independent is extraordinary. As you can imagine, this is a really important point and we'll see what this means for the quality of their products when we analyze them in a minute. GT's has expanded their kombucha product range over the years and now has three distinct categories. And since it can be a bit confusing working out what's best for you, here's a quick breakdown of the three. The most interesting to us is their first category of kombucha called Synergy Raw Kombucha. This is their non-alcohol kombucha, meaning it is under 0.5% alcohol content and able to be enjoyed by everyone. This is what we'll be focusing on this video. GT's second category of kombucha is called Classic Kombucha and actually utilizes GT Dave's original recipe for kombucha. But in doing so, it can contain above 0.5% alcohol and as such is now sold as a 21 and over drink. Finally, GT's offers hard kombucha products, which sit around 3% alcohol by volume, which is not bad. In fact, it is less than light beer, which comes in around 4% alcohol. It is worth noting that GT's now offers a range of other fermented products, such as water kefir, mushroom infused teas, and even coconut yogurt. Now it's time for us to take the gloves off and shine a spotlight on what's actually inside GT's kombucha so we can answer four questions. One, how well is it made? Two, does it taste good? Three, is it in fact good for you? And four, is it worth your money? Of course, to make this analysis even more useful for you, we'll also look at how GT's compares to other kombucha brands. Naturally, to make this comparison fair, we need to make sure that we're comparing apples with apples. And after a bit of research, we found that all major brands have one flavor in common with GT's, which is ginger. So in other words, we're going to compare ginger with ginger. In this analysis, when we're comparing brands on things like flavoring agents used, sugar content, etc., we'll be referencing GT's Synergy Gingerade, which I have here. 
Unsurprisingly, given Dave's passion for all things fermented, GT's kombucha is made with great care. For starters, while most of the industry has moved to brewing kombucha in huge vats, often around the 50 gallon mark, GT still brews their kombucha in small five gallon jars. Given GT's is selling well over 1 million bottles a year, and thus making north of 125,000 gallons every single year, that means GT's is brewing over 25,000 individual batches of kombucha per year. That's extraordinary. And also quite refreshing to see a big company sticking to its craft brewing roots. Just as interestingly, GT Synergy Kombucha range undergoes a fermentation period of 30 days, which is important as it gives the SCOBY more than enough time to work its magic. While some of their competitors do a similar brew period, such as Remedy, others simply do not disclose their fermentation period. Sadly, many even hide behind statements like, ours is a proprietary kombucha fermentation process. In other words, what we're saying, thanks for being transparent, Dave. Now, when it comes to how GTs brews the tea that goes into their kombucha, well, they're doing it fairly similar to everyone else, which means they're using a combination of organic black tea and organic green tea. In fact, one trend we saw throughout the entire industry, which is worth highlighting here, is that pretty much all brands exclusively use organic non-GMO ingredients. Even better, most labels bear the USDA organic and non-GMO project verified badges, making them many steps ahead of other sectors in the food and beverage industry. So a hat tip to all of you lovely kombucha brewers. However, we start to see some differences when it comes to how GT sweeten their tea versus the competition. You see, while GT uses kiwi fruit juice, most other brands use plain old cane sugar. And although most of this gets eaten up during fermentation, we think we know why GT's is using fruit juice and it may have something to do with how it helps the flavor. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Hold up. Hold up. Wait, I like that. The fact that it is a less processed form of sugar that fits Dave's food first philosophy. And if we're putting our cynical research hats on for a second, it might have something to do with marketing and nutrition labeling laws. Given sugar from fruit is not counted as added sugar on the label. Okay, so the next big thing we want to look at is how GT's treats their kombucha after it's been brewed. And from our research, we were happy to see that GT's has stuck true to the traditional kombucha brewing process. That means they don't pasteurize, filter, or dilute their kombucha. And while most good quality kombucha brands follow Dave's lead here, the same can't be said about two of his biggest competitors. To find out more about them, check out our free kombucha brands comparison tool. The link is in the description below. Finally, let's look at how GT's flavors their kombucha once it's been brewed, focusing specifically on their ginger kombucha. As you can see here, GT's gingerade is simply flavored with fresh pressed ginger juice. That's it. As a registered dietitian, I love simple ingredient lists, but even more so, I love when beneficial foods are used as flavorings. And since ginger root has known anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and digestive health benefits, we love to see it included here. By contrast, when we analyze the flavorings used by other companies for their ginger kombuchas, we saw many adding in ingredients like ginger extract and natural flavors. We think this is a missed opportunity by them to pack in the health benefits of ginger root. So once again, props to you GT Day for choosing ingredients that deliver on more than just taste. Okay, so we just had an in-depth look at the quality of GT's kombucha brewing process and we got a little into the weeds there. So I think it's time for a quick break. And I bet you're wondering, hey Rochelle, enough chitter chatter, tell us what you think of the taste. I hear you. So let's pour a glass of GT Synergy Gingerade here and give it a try. Oh, this is a perfect glass of kombucha. So thank you, GT Dave. What's really remarkable about GT's kombucha is that the bubbles, that delicious effervescence you see when you open a bottle, they are all natural. They come purely as a result of the brewing process. And that's not always common with commercial kombuchas. In fact, many of the other leading brands 
pump their kombucha with carbon dioxide to get the same level of fizz. And although carbonation is not inherently a bad thing, it does beg the question, why can't their brewing process naturally deliver the same level of fizz? Also worth noting is that GT's kombucha range tends to be a little less sweet and a little more vinegary than other brands. That's not surprising given Dave doesn't use extracts or additional flavoring agents. In other words, GT's tastes like real kombucha. And once again, we find ourselves saying, well done, Dave, for not pandering to a sweeter flavor profile that would surely attract more mainstream palates, something many of his competitors have done. Finally, when you drink GT's kombucha, you might see some strands of floaties or other little things inside of it, which are perfectly fine. In case you don't know, they are actually colonies of bacteria and yeast from the SCOBY and an encouraging sign as it shows GT's is making real traditional kombucha. So we've already touched on a few things that relate to how healthy GT's kombucha is. We also looked at the quality ingredients used like organic tea and fresh pressed ginger juice. But now let's get even deeper to find out whether GT's kombucha is really good for us or not. So this is going to be a big section and we've tried our best to break it up for you. Nevertheless, get your thinking caps on as this information is important. So I wanna cut straight to the chase here and look at the probiotics inside GT's Synergy Ginger Aid. After all, these are perhaps the number one reason people are drinking kombucha these days. If you look at the label of GT's Ginger Aid, which I'll bring up on the screen now, you'll see it claims nine billion organisms of probiotics are present in one bottle which is approximately 16 fluid ounces or 480 mils. Before we look at them, we found it interesting that GTs didn't use the term CFUs or colony forming units to describe the 9 billion probiotics. Instead, they simply said organisms. This might be due to the fact that they can't guarantee the viability of all 9 billion by the time you go to drink it. Interestingly, other companies have approached this issue by simply disclaiming that the CFU count is measured at time of manufacture, not expiry. So back to the type of probiotics in GT's kombucha. Well, as you can see here, GT's come from three groups of beneficial bacteria and yeast, with B. coagulans and L. bacterium being types of bacteria and S. boulardii being a type of beneficial yeast. All three have been clinically studied to confer benefits on humans when administered in adequate amounts and thus meet the WHO's technical definition of a probiotic. In terms of acid resistance, both B. coagulans and S. boulardii will likely stand up well to the low pH or highly acidic environment of both kombucha and your stomach. But we can't confirm this for L. bacterium because GT's does not specify it on the species or strains level. Meanwhile, all three groups of probiotics should be easily tolerated by most people. But that said, they may take some getting used to. In fact, GT's mentions on their site that people should ease into drinking kombucha by starting out with four ounces or 120 mils per day. All things considered, GT's kombucha contains three solid probiotics. Now, before we look at how this compares to their competitors, I wanna explain something here that may come as a big surprise to you. The probiotics stated on GT's label are most likely added into the kombucha after it has been brewed, meaning they are not naturally produced by the fermentation process itself. And before we look at why we believe this to be so, I wanna be really clear here on two things. One, this finding applies to all kombucha brands that state specific probiotics and amounts on their labels, meaning it is not just GTs doing this. And two, it is not necessarily a bad thing. You see why we all generally prefer products with the least amount of additives, sometimes thoughtful additions, like probiotics in this case, can actually improve the quality and health benefits of the product. Okay, so here are the three main reasons we believe the probiotics you see on the label of GT's kombucha are added in and not the result of natural kombucha fermentation. One, for starters, their labels state the exact same probiotic species
species and in the exact same amounts across multiple flavors. That doesn't really make sense to us because the research shows fermentation ingredients like flavors or even ratios of ingredients can change the overall bacteria and yeast makeup in the finished product. So in other words, we believe the chance of GTs getting the exact same amounts of probiotics across multiple flavors naturally is very unlikely. Secondly, and more obviously, the B. coagulans bacteria found in GT's kombucha is made by a company called Carey. And it's something you actually find in probiotic supplements as well as fortified foods. Even more interesting, in looking through studies detailing the bacteria and yeast makeup of kombucha, we haven't seen any evidence that this specific strain in B. coagulans is naturally present in kombucha. Meanwhile, the other two groups of probiotics in GT's kombucha further reinforce our belief that they're added in, and I'll quickly touch on them now. So firstly, with the lactobacillus bacterium in GT's. Well, yes, it's true that some lactobacillus species are present in kombucha, but the bacteria that naturally reign supreme in kombucha are known as acetic acid bacteria, which are a completely different type of bacteria. And from what we've seen in analyzed kombucha samples, even these dominant acetic acid bacteria are present in relatively low quantities. So that makes us believe that it's highly unlikely that GT's kombucha would naturally contain lactobacillus bacteria at the level suggested on their label. And in regards to the S. Bilardi and GTs, while our research revealed that yeast are not only present, but likely the dominant microbes in kombucha overall, we didn't find any evidence that S. Bilardi was the primary yeast making up the yeast population in kombucha. Perhaps most interesting to us, S. Bilardi is a strain that is known to produce a hefty amount of CO2. And so if we put our detective hats on here for a second, we have a hunch that GT smartly chose to add S. Bilardi to their kombucha because of its ability to give kombucha that effervescent and carbonated mouthfeel that we all enjoy so much. So while it's likely added in and not naturally occurring from fermentation, we have to give credit to GTs for formulating their product in a way that improves not only the quality, but also the potential health benefits of their kombucha. So with all of this research taken together, it is highly likely that a standardized probiotic formula is being added to GT's kombucha after fermentation. So just to reiterate here, GT's fermentation process may naturally produce beneficial bacteria and yeast, but the reality is we don't know. First of all, they have not been identified. Also for them to be technically defined as probiotics, they need to have been studied to see if they confer a benefit to humans, which from what we have seen hasn't been done. However, when it comes to delivering on consumer expectations of probiotics, we'd actually like to applaud GTs. Yay! <laughs> They've thoughtfully processed their kombucha by increasing the benefits and quality of their product. One might even argue that they've done this in a way that makes their product even more beneficial than home-brewed kombucha. But once again, if you're drinking commercial kombucha because you think it's only packed with naturally occurring probiotics, just understand that there is no such published data from GTs or any other kombucha company. All we know for sure is that GT's kombucha contains three probiotics listed on the label and they have been most likely added in after fermentation. All of this does make us wonder, given kombucha is a multi-billion dollar industry, surely some companies can fund studies to better understand the health impacts of bacteria and yeast naturally found in kombucha. Now with that out of the way, let's see how GT's competitors compare on the probiotic front. So overall, they offer significantly less probiotics, with some stating one to two billion CFUs, others simply saying billions, and the rest not even claiming any specific probiotic count. And before anyone argues, hey, GT's bottles come in a bigger serving size, well, let me assure you, even when we standardize the CFU count of all the different brands to a common serving size of 12 fluid ounces or 355 mils, the results remain the same. GT's beats them all by a mile. Now let's look at the darker side of kombucha and analyze the potentially bad stuff you will find in GT's kombucha, being alcohol, caffeine, and sugar. So first up, alcohol. 
Yes, there is some in kombucha, including in GT's Synergy line, but that's totally understandable given it is a byproduct of the natural fermentation process. Thankfully, over the years, GT's, along with the other leading brands, have fine-tuned their manufacturing and fulfillment processes such that this amount is under 0.5% alcohol. This is both when bottles come off the line and when you consume them. So as long as you're fine with trace amounts of alcohol, there's nothing wrong with GT Synergy Kombucha range. Now, what about caffeine? After all, we are talking about a tea-based product. Well, once again, you're pretty safe here. For example, GT Synergy range contains just eight to 16 milligrams of caffeine per 16 fluid ounces or 480 ml bottle, making it a fraction of the caffeine you'd find in an equivalent serving of coffee. And this is a similar story for most other brands, with the exception of Kavita, which comes in at roughly 70 milligrams of caffeine per bottle, or said differently, roughly five to eight times more than GT's. Lastly, what about sugar? Well, as we saw earlier, a lot of sugar added in during the brewing process will get eaten up by the SCOBY, but not necessarily all of it. So if we look at GT Synergy Gingerade, we can see 12 grams or three teaspoons of sugar is expected to remain in one bottle of their kombucha when you drink it. If you standardize the serving size against its competitors, GT's is pretty low in sugar. For example, it's roughly equal to Health Aid and Hum, and about 30% lower in sugar than Kavita. That said, if you want zero sugar, then GT's is not the brand for you. Instead, Hum's Zero Kombucha range or Remedy Kombucha are the best bets. But of course, this does not take into account all the things we mentioned earlier in this video, such as the brewing process, probiotic content, and so on. So if you want to see exactly how all these brands compare and which is best for you, then check out our kombucha brand comparison tool, link in the description below. Finally, let's look at price. After all, kombucha is one of the priciest drinks you'll find in the grocery store. So looking at GT's website at the time of the video, we can see a bottle of their ginger ale costs $3.30 which is not cheap, but since we're talking about real, authentic kombucha, it's not unreasonable. Meanwhile, GT's competitors all come in around a similar price range, starting at $3 with Kavita and going up to $4 with HealthAid. But interestingly, if we standardize them all to an equal serving size, then we can see only one brand is actually cheaper than GT's, and that is Kavita, which, as we talked about before, might fall a bit short of the quality standard set by GTs. So what we're saying here is that in the kombucha world, GTs represents great value for money as it's perhaps the best quality kombucha on the market and at the same time, the second most affordable. Bravo, Dave. So we've been on a bit of a journey and along the way, we've seen that GTs has an amazing founder behind it. GT Dave, who makes kombucha in line with traditional brewing process, and that their end product is as authentic a kombucha as you can buy. We even saw that it's almost the most affordable too when you standardize the serving size. For us, GT is the number one commercial kombucha brand. I couldn't help myself, but I had to bring out the trophy again. If you wanna look at our free kombucha brands comparison tool, which analyzes the quality of all the top selling kombucha brands, including their exact probiotic count, sugar content, and more, check out the link in the description below. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, we have no affiliations with any of the kombucha brands. So it's 100% independent and should save you some time. And if you wanna make your own kombucha at home, then check out our ultimate guide to kombucha ebook. It's free and the link is in the description below. We have a question for you. What do you think about GT's kombucha and which is your favorite flavor? Leave a comment below. We're fascinated to hear what you've experienced. And if you enjoyed this video as part of our fermented food series, I'd love for you to join our Essential Stacks community by clicking the subscribe button below. We research the most important ways you can improve your digestive health so you can love your gut again. Bye for now.